Hello. It's time to discuss the sources of electromagnetic fields in FDTD simulations. In this tutorial, you'll learn about the different types of sources commonly used and how to set them up to build your FDTD models. So once you've created an empty simulation, add a new source and name it dipole. Then from the Type drop-down list, select the Point Dipole option. This will allow you to simulate oscillating dipoles, which are useful for exciting resonant modes of cavities or calculating photonic crystal band structures. They can also model light emission from fluorescent molecules. You can leave the dipole at its default position or change it as desired. Next, define the source field pattern by selecting one of the electric or magnetic field components. These animations demonstrate how the direction of the injected electromagnetic waves changes when you select different point dipole polarizations. In addition to the field pattern, you need to set the time dependency of the source. You can achieve this by choosing a wavelength range, as shown here, or a frequency center and bandwidth. Click the Plot button to visualize the source spectrum and its time dependence. By default, the source spectrum has 50% of its maximum amplitude at the bandwidth limits. However, you can customize this behavior. If necessary, you can adjust the source amplitude, phase, and the position of its maximum value in the time domain using the Advanced tab. Finally, create a field monitor and run the simulation to observe the field pattern created by the point dipole. Moving forward, use the Edit command to create a new simulation version. Then disable the point dipole source and add a new source. Choose the Uniform Current Source type, which is similar to the point dipole source, but generalized to higher dimensions. So let's create a line source, as shown in this animation. Set its size to 9 microns in the x direction and select the EX polarization and adjust the time dependence as before. Run the simulation and visualize the results. For certain problems like calculating the response of metasurfaces and diffraction gratings, it's necessary to have uniform illumination at different incident angles. In such cases, you can add a plane wave source as demonstrated here. Here, the direction parameter sets a downward or upward wave. The angle theta and angle phi represent the polar and azimuth angles of the propagation direction, respectively. You can switch between S and P polarizations using the polar angle parameter. When computing scattered fields only, such as when calculating scattered cross-sections of various objects, you can add a total field scattered field, or TFSF source. As shown in these animations, the TFSF source allows you to specify a box region where a plane wave is injected. Inside this region, the fields are a superposition of the incident and scattered waves, while outside the TFSF box, you only have the scattered fields. The setup for TFSF is similar to the plane wave one, but you need to define a volume region and set the field injection axis. A Gaussian beam source is the ideal choice for simulating the coupling between electromagnetic devices and optical fibers or lenses. The new parameters here are the waist radius, which determines the spot size of the beam at the focal point, and the waist distance, which must be negative for a converging beam and positive for a diverging one. An astigmatic Gaussian beam source is also available for cases where the waist radius should be different in the x and y directions. Concluding, to excite a device using a specific guided mode, like shown here, you need to use a mode source. For a simple example, create a waveguide that is 1.5 microns wide and 0.75 microns thick with a refractive index of 2.0. Include a mode source in the simulation and set its position and size as shown here. Let's insert the TM1 guided mode, where the electric field oscillates in the Z direction. So set the mode index parameter to 3 and select it. In this case, a num modes value of 4 is necessary, as the modes are sorted by their effective indices in descending order. The target nef parameter is a guess for the desired mode effective index. In this example, you can set it to the waveguide refractive index to start from the highest effective index mode, which is the TE0. After running the simulation, you'll observe the TM1 mode propagating through the waveguide in the positive x direction. 
Now you know how to select and set up a light source for different situations. In the next tutorials, you'll learn how to set up monitors to calculate and visualize quantities of interest in FDTD simulations.